Guys, welcome to Age of Empires Definitive Edition, where we're going to be looking at one of their most recent updates after a long, long time. Content Update 8 or Update 8 or whatever. It's not adding more content, it's just sort of fixing the game and adding a few things that are nice. And basically, we've, we've got a bit of a history of critiquing or, and analyzing Age of Empires Definitive Edition over the past year or so. And it's gotten some attention, and I want to address a few things of what I said before, which I now think what I said was wrong, and clarify some points, because I know on the reddits and in the comments down below, uh, there's been some criticism of my videos and things like that. But uh, I've got a lot to say, so I've got notes to keep me on track. So. This is basically looking at the game and seeing if it's risen from the dead, because development of Age of Empires Definit Definitive Edition stopped, right? It, it went about two months after release, and then funding was, well, it was reported that funding was cut, developers were shifted to other projects, probably Age of Empires uh, Definitive Edition 2 and all of that, and stuff kind of just halted, right? It just halted. And suddenly they said, oh, well, it's been out for a year. We're going to release another update. Okay, so here we are checking out the game. Now, addressing some past issues with my videos. Uh, one of the criticisms I've received is that the an my analysis was a bit too shallow or I was just sort of talking about obvious points. And that was sort of the point of those videos because I wasn't I'm not making these analysis videos to like go deep into the topic. I talk for us common people, you know, we play the game, we buy the game, you know, it, I'm gonna go over the points which will inform you about what the game is generally like, because when it comes down to the nitty gritty, it's gonna be an individual consideration for everyone. So yeah, I, I'm communicating generally to a general audience, though, though, if you want more specifics, I did go into it quite a lot. As you can see from this comment here, I left on my last video uh, talking about Age of Empires Definitive Edition, we've got some thoughts of things, uh, but it would make for a very lengthy and boring video. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we're not going to go into that. Now, besides that, um, I, I made some assumptions, which probably I shouldn't have. So for example, I said in the last video that Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition would probably be cancelled because this one did so badly and didn't sell well. I retract that statement officially because they released this game in this state, well, in the state that it was in, very obviously incomplete, and then they abandoned development, uh, only to return like eight months later. So if they were, they're, if they're willing to, if Microsoft's willing to release Age of Empires Definitive Edition 1 in this state, they'll release Age of Empires Definitive Edition 2 in whatever state it's in, okay? So they're pro most likely not going to cancel it, but if it's going to be good, We'll, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, history says probably not, because Microsoft and Forgotten Empires, I, I put more responsibility on Microsoft. Age of Mythology, that, mm, the recent expansion there, or the latest expansion there, and the multiplayer, that, not quite what it's supposed to be. Age of Empires Definitive Edition, not quite what it's supposed to be. You know, Forgotten Empires is doing good work on Age of Empires 2, though. I like the expansion there. Um, and I also said that if they, like, because it was so late and they abandoned development, even if they fix everything in Age of Empires Definitive Edition now, it still wouldn't sell for exclusivity issues and stuff like that. And, you know, it wouldn't matter. But let's see. A recent update has launched. Let's go to the lobby browser. How many games are going on right now? It is 9.30, p.m. GMT plus 8 on a Thursday. We've got two games, which is okay. It's not exactly peak time, but it's not exactly a populated lobby either. So that is something to consider. Okay, now, we're gonna go over issues with the game in the past and what has changed. There are patch notes, which I'll link down below with this most recent update. You can see the build number over there. It has, that number has changed. And first of all, 
there's been a problem with lack of communication from Forgotten Empires and Microsoft about this game and about its development, which is a little bit better now because I actually tweeted out, you know, the patch notes and there is a list of patch notes on their blog and all of that. But they were silent for months. So hopefully they keep that up. It's OK now since they're talking about it. Um, but yeah, but also they weren't really listening to the community on what we what people wanted in general. And one of the nice little updates they've added is building and unit decay is now faster. So your map is not littered with corpses, which is nice. Now, going into single player, uh, I'm actually just going to load up a game here. Oh, actually, what I can show you is first I'm going to show you a clip which I recorded before this update. And let's have a look at this. See this clip here. So I'm not playing right now. See this clip here. Farmers tend to get stuck on farms. This is before. This is on the past. There's a few issues in this little clip. They mined resources. This is with the AI. They mined resources far away from the base. Look at that. They just... I don't know what they're doing. They used to do that. You know, and then pathfinding. Here's a small group of units. I just set two waypoints so they hit each other. And let's see what they do. That's not exactly the best. There's, there's some units which barely moved at all. They just sort of stopped. But uh, they eventually made it. Uh, we've seen much better, of course. But um, it really should be better than that. Especially since they promised improved pathfinding. Now, with this recent update, they promised even more improved pathfinding. So hopefully that is going to be seen today. Hmm. Problems with no classic mode in multiplayer campaigns, still not there. You know, they promised classic mode, it's not there. Um, there's still no, there's no match, to be fair, I don't think they technically promised this, but in terms of modernizing an old RTS, there's still no matchmaking in multiplayer. And now we're going to do a new pathfinding test. So I'm not going to load into a game here. I'm going to start up a new game here and show you what things are like now. So I'm just going to load into a random map, start with lots of resources. Let's start a game and let's do a pathfinding test. So I'm just going to build like a barracks. Let's crowd up the place here. Okay. We're going to get a bunch of units and path them through our base. Just to see, just to see. There we go. Let's build that. Let's build another barracks. Let's get some... It's T, right? Yeah, okay. By the way, you can do mixed unit queues now. That's a nice little addition. The granary has a nice addition as well. Okay, let's keep things going. Just fill it up with a bit of a maze, I think. No, don't start auto-collecting. That's not important. Uh, let's crowd up the middle a bit because notably the pathfinding is supposed to be better going through small crevices So I think this should be a pretty good test of them walking through That's uh, yeah, that should be okay Let's place one there waiting for a few more cavemen to show up not enough food perfect Okay. I think that's a good enough maze. Okay, so now we're gonna path through all of this and see how they do. One going one direction and then another one going through and then back the same way. Okay, so we've got almost all the tr guys we need here. So all of you go gather over there. Okay, so we're going to gather them all on this side. So now, they do wiggle around a little bit, which is a little meh, but it's not so bad. Let's send them to the other side. Okay, okay, not bad. You can see the behavior. They, they seem to want to form lines now. You see that? They actually want to form a line. Which is better than before. And they made it to the other side with minimal pain. 
Let's try the back the other way. You see how they actually do try to form lines? Look at that. Okay, that's improved. That's improved. That's better. It could have been, I mean, it can be better, but it's not bad. Like, they're still, like, wandering off a little bit, but they get to the other side, and they're not, like, stuck there forever, which is a problem. Now, here's the real test. Going one way, then back the other. Alamar. To there, Alamar. and then back that way. So now they got to turn around and crash into each other. Let's see what happens. Okay, some go around. No, no problem. No problem. Those trees at the end actually help the test as well. So then they turn around. Okay, they get a little stuck. Can they figure it out? Okay, it's it's a little bit of a problem up that top left side there. So they're supposed to... Okay! Okay, ah, okay. Okay, they made it. You know, a little, you know, a little slow, but... They made it. Like, this guy here is lagging, but... They made it. They made it okay. Like... You don't want to be doing this on purpose, really, but it's okay, okay. They made it, slowly, but before, I don't think they would have made it. <laughs> you saw in the clip, they just go, and in our playthrough before, you know, just getting like a unit and an artifact telling them to move, they, they just don't move at all. So, they've improved it a bit. Wow, technology has not come far. Technology is fine. You do this sort of stuff in StarCraft 2, it's fine. It's like water through sand, you know, but eh, we, this is at least an improvement. It's an improvement. So they promised better pathfinding, and it is better. They didn't promise absolutely amazing pathfinding. They promised better. So, okay. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna load into another thing. Now, you guys are asking about the AI. The AI has been improved a little bit. Uh, and I have this AI testing one for a classic mode game. And you'll see it's still got some problems, right? So, one one thing, I'm not sure whether it's um, actually improved or not, but in this example, they build towers a bit better. They're not building towers in the corner here. However, we are still experiencing storage wars. We are still experiencing storage wars, uh, and we are still very massively experiencing idle farmers on the farms. As we saw in the clip just now, this is this was a problem, and it still is a problem. You can see over here, look how many farmers are just stood around. And look at the map, these orange points building storage pits everywhere, you know. There's this Choson, these brown, this brown guy building storage pits here for no reason, extending out this way. Orange extending storage pits out this way. It's still doing what difficulty? This is hardest. This is hardest. Um, so storage wars is still a thing and idle farmers is also still a thing. Now, besides that they tend to apparently in the patch notes they said they can now the ai can now hunt elephants because apparently before the ai could not hunt elephants why i don't know no idea uh but i have not seen the ai hunt an elephant yet right but in general it's it's improved because the most notable thing is build orders were apparently improved and it seems like the build orders for these AI generally okay. You know, towers are currently in reasonable positions. You know, like a tower there totally makes sense. A storage pit near that stone makes sense. You know, um, these granaries were placed near the berries. Although they don't fully harvest the berries, they do actually at least place the granaries near the berries. So that's good. Oh, they're hunting an elephant. Yes, the AI can hunt an elephant. Look at that. I don't know why they couldn't before, but they can definitely hunt elephants now. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, um, so, oh, speaking of, I forgot to note one thing. Um, you can now do auto reseed from the granary. I forgot to show that just now. I built the granary. Uh, you can do auto reseed like it is in Age of Empires 2. So that is in the game as well. So the mixed unit queues and mixed tech queues are added in and auto reseed added in. Which actually, that brings up an interesting point, right? 
those things are also in classic mode. Right? They're also in classic mode. If you just show here, let me load up a classic mode game. Those things have been added to classic mode, which is important to note. It's important to note. If I build these two things here, it basically changes the original game, right? So for example, see this? You can do mixed unit queues. And also, look at this new icon here. Toggle automatic reseeding of farms. So this has some implications for the existing esports scene. Because there is, for example, in Vietnam, there is a large Age of Empires 1 esports scene. And it's still going on today. And one problem with Age of Empires Definitive Edition is you can't use classic mode in multiplayer. But if they do actually add in classic mode in multiplayer at this point, well, they might not be able to use this version because these things are not in the original, right? Auto reseeding of farms is like in Age of Empires 3, not in Age of Empires 2. Okay. But basically, there's auto reseeding of farms and you can mix queues for different things of units and techs as well, right? Where before, when you clicked on one, it disabled. So if, if you wanted to pick up a new esports scene, this is basically a different game, which updating in esports, it, it happens, right? Dota changes all the time. They, add, they just added a new hero. I think it's called Mars or something. You know, it happens. But, you know, it, it is something to consider, right? But there's no classic mode in multiplayer anyway, so they can't use this version for that. <laughs> um, you could use a definitive edition for that. Uh, but let's load up, uh, let, let's look at the AI from another perspective here. Let's go to definitive edition. We saw the classic AI just now. I'm gonna leave it on population. Uh, let's up it to 50. Just now is population 50. Let's set it to 100. We'll start in the tool age resources. Let's set it to default. So we see what they do. Difficulty hardest. And let's put this on a nice, Flatter map, I think. Mm, just rivers. Rivers is a, a nice default standard map. Let's start the game. And let's have a have a look. Uh, real map. No fog. And let's get ourselves killed. So. It would be nice to have proper spectator mode as well. Like, I would like to be able to see their perspective and not have to kill myself at the start of a map if I want to spectate AI games, but whatever. Let's watch what they do. And let me check my notes here to see if I'm missing anything I haven't mentioned. Bugs and crashes. So apparently some crashes were fixed and some bugs were fixed. But I experienced two crashes just today when I was like loading up the game, watching the AI do stuff. The game crashed twice today. And you hear that Academy sound effect? That's a bug. That's a, that's a bug I've known about for a while. Um, on some games, as soon as a villager attacks a lion for the first time, it plays the Academy sound effect. So there should be a dead lion somewhere around here. I don't know who's killed a lion, but there should be a dead lion. I can't find it. Maybe the the unit decay is too fast. <laughs> I don't know. But that that's one of the bugs. Um, for some reason, I don't know. When you attack, yeah, when you attack a lion for the first time, it plays the academy sound effect. Don't ask me why. <laughs> uh, there's also other sound glitches. Hear that? The lion. It plays on loop. It happens in classic mode as well. In classic mode, the sound effect is slightly different. It's more of a vroom. So then it just goes vroom, 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 vroom. So you hear that? Yeah. So there's some sound glitches. <laughs> we, can, we can hear it. Uh, but let's see how this AI does. And if on definitive edition, uh, definitive mode rather, if they behave any better. Um, Right, and while we watch the AI, 
there's been some defenses for the game. Now, if you saw this long comment, which I did, right? <laughs> um, it is in response to, to someone who is defending the game. And there's been a few defenses of the game. Um, one was on the exclusivity. Oh, we've got idle farmers. One was on the exclusivity. Now, I have no problems with the Windows Store. People want to open new stores? Fine. Discord has a store now. Whatever, you know. Windows having a store makes more sense than Discord having a store. Okay, but the problem with the Windows Store is it ties it to exclusivity, which is Windows 10, which has been noted to have many problems of people updating it and upgrading to it. Oh, this guy rushed towers. At least the towers make sense, though. Um, for example, my old motherboard did not understand or recognize Windows 10. So I had to change my motherboard. It could not get a BIOS update because it was a proprietary motherboard. So that's a manufacturer problem, right? Um, there's also just, you look up news, Windows 10 problems, and there's apparently a few months ago it started auto-deleting files in my documents and stuff like that, right? There's all sorts of reasons why someone would not want to upgrade. Especially, here's, here's my stance. As long as a previous version of Windows is officially supported, then it should be the user's choice to choose whether they want to upgrade or not, right? So for example, if you say, oh, this thing doesn't work properly in Windows 98 or Windows XP even, that's on you, right? But Windows 7, I think official support ends in 2020, 2021. So until then, you can't complain about people not wanting to upgrade from Windows 7. And I think Windows uh, 8 official support ends 2023 or 4, somewhere there. You can look it up. And as long as it's officially supported, you should you you can't be blamed. The user cannot be blamed for wanting to not upgrade to Windows 10. However, the big defense that was thrown at me for Age of Empires Definitive Edition requiring Windows 10 was here's here's a statement which was sent to me. If you want to play the latest video games, you're gonna need the latest hardware. This is not the crisis of 2018. This is a remaster of a game that's two decades old. You didn't need to upgrade to the latest hardware to play StarCraft Remastered. You don't need to upgrade to the latest hardware to play the new Settlers History Collection. Right? That defense is ridiculous. Especially since uh, I was having a lengthy discussion on YouTube about the state of video games and hardware. And throughout history, there's been periods where, especially the early to mid 2000s or the noughties, uh, like 2002 to 2010, basically, where technology was progressing at a rate for video games, especially introducing new 3D tech, where basically every few years you had to upgrade if you wanted to play the latest video games. But right now, we are not in that age. Right now, we are in an age where flexibility is possible, right? Because you can create a new game nowadays, and it's basically most games running on Unity or Unreal, but even if you're using a custom engine, you know, you have graphics options. If your computer cannot run it, you can tone down the graphics, right? Very simple. You know, you could run, you know, some of the latest first-person shooters, on old hardware, as long as you turn down the graphics to low, or very low, right? So since we are in an age of hardware flexibility, the argument of needing the latest hardware to play the latest video games does not hold true right now. It might hold true a couple years from now, maybe when VR starts coming in, or augmented reality becomes more of an everyday thing, or, you know, even like uh, the whole ray tracing technology on the new NVIDIA GPUs. Right? It's... Th there's, there's probably going to be a time where every few years you're going to have to upgrade again to play the latest games. But right now is not that time, and Age of Empires Definitive Edition does not fall into a time period like that. It is not 2005, it is not 2010 even. It's currently 2019, and this released 2018, a year where 
hardware flexibility is fine. So that argument does not fly by me. So if people don't want to upgrade to Windows 10, that is acceptable. If people don't have the latest hardware, that is also acceptable, right? So Age of Empires Definitive Edition has an exclusivity problem, but again, I reiterate, I'm fine with it being on the Windows Store and not on Steam. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. The problem is, I wish the Windows Store was on Windows 8 and 7 as well. At least Windows 8, you know? The Windows Store for this should not only be a Windows 10 thing. Otherwise, end official support for 7 and 8 now. End it. If you want everyone to shift to Windows 10, end official support. Windows 8 is total trash though. I have a feeling Windows 8 will be a bit like Vista. Vista was, was you know, uh, on launch. I think by the end of its life cycle, Windows 8 will be fine, but it will have difficulty getting over its, um, its history, right? But with Windows 10, I don't think Microsoft cares about Windows 8 too much, right? <laughs> uh, but, you know, you want people to shift to Windows 10, fine. I think Windows 10 is a good product. I like Windows 10. Um, and support. Windows 7 is still officially supported right now. Ma like, I think mainstream support was ended, but extended support is still going. Ended. Then, you know, you know, send an email to everyone, put a notification up on Windows 7 saying, you know, we're going to end support in six months. Please upgrade to Windows 10. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Storage wars near brown. Oh, yeah, we're getting storage wars. Look at this. We've got Assyrian yellow storage pits next to the Zenobia Palmyrian storage pits here. <laughs> I don't understand why they can't fix this. I've I've messed with AI files in the past, and usually you can set like a, a distance from your town center of what zones you consider to be yours. But, oh, well. Storage was a still a thing. So yeah, that defense of needing the latest hardware to play this, please. This is not this is, this is not Assassin's Creed Odyssey, okay? <laughs> this is this is not Crisis. This is not Cyberpunk 2077. This is not Star Citizen. <laughs> this is a remaster. Uh, the idling farmer is not too bad right now. I think it figures it out a bit better on Definitive Edition with walkable farms. Yeah, it's not as bad as um, Classic Mode. So Classic Mode farmers on AI, that's that's a problem. But Definitive Edition looks okay. Uh, and right. So another thing that was thrown at in defense of this game for all of this... What I called... What, what I said was... They focused on bells and whistles. They focused on shine and sparkles rather than actually modernizing this game, right? If you want to modernize an RTS, right? You want to take a 90s RTS and modernize it. One, get it in widescreen. That's a given. Uh, two, put in matchmaking if there wasn't already. Uh, three, put in a replay system. That's it. That's all you need to do. Get it in widescreen. Matchmaking. Replay system. Everything beyond that are extras and bonuses. So one, there's no replay system yet. It's in widescreen. Gotta give them that. Uh, <laughs> no replay system, no matchmaking, which is a problem. And also matchmaking, why there's no matchmaking, it's... It's crazy to me how there isn't, because even StarCraft 1 had fan-made matchmaking in iCup, right? And it's very easy to put in a simple, not a, not a legit matchmaking, but a simple matchmaker is easy enough to implement, right? You can call it whatever you want. Let's say we've got stone, tool, uh, bronze, and iron tiers, right? four tiers and then you put number systems each number is like a thousand points so from like zero to a thousand is stone you know uh, we could have five let's add nomad zero to a thousand is nomad thousand to two thousand is stone 
you know. Uh, 2,000 to 3,000 is tool, 3 to 4 is uh, bronze, 4 to 5 is iron, right? We do that. Uh, everyone starts at 2,500, middle of the pack. You win a game in competitive, you gain 25 points. You lose a game, you lose 25 points. And let it run. And you will get a basic matchmaking system. You know, it, it won't be, it's not like proper, I, I, I understand it's not like a proper real matchmaking, but it would be better than nothing. And right now, if you go into multiplayer, you go on there and, and someone writes noobs only, you know, but maybe that guy's a pro and he wants to like grief on some noobs, you know. So that can be a problem. Uh, I, you know, alt accounts, of course, are a thing as well. But come on, basic matchmaking, not that hard to implement. But right now I know Forgotten Empires has limited resources to continue development of Age of Empires Definitive Edition 1. Right? So that is a problem. Look at these storage wars. Just look at the map. Look at the map. <laughs> storage wars. Uh... Well, the AI is trying to kill each other. So yeah, if you wanted to modernize an old RTS, you need those three things, right? Widescreen, replay, matchmaking. And there's no, the, like two of the main things are not here, you know? Redoing the music, this music we're hearing right now, it's okay. I don't, like, no. It's okay, you know, getting voice acting for the campaigns, okay, this whole new graphical visual style, okay, you know, but these things should have come after. Classic mode in multiplayer, where's that? Classic mode campaigns, where's that? They basically rebuilt ba the Battle for Tunez mission exactly. But it's in Definitive Edition, not Classic Mode. Why? And you know the defense I got for why there's no Classic Mode in, in the campaigns? Oh, well, the, with the redesigned maps, with the redesigned maps in the campaigns, the Classic Mode wouldn't work because, you know, the farms aren't traversable and the Classic Mode maps, you know, often have maps where you need to be able to walk on the farms. What? Just have two separate maps. If you play Definitive Edition, you get the Definitive Edition maps. If you play Classic Mode, you get the original Classic Mode maps. It's not that hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, basically, basically. I know this all sounds very negative, but someone actually asked me a few weeks ago if I had to give a review score for Age of Empires Definitive Edition. If I had to give a review score, what would I give it? And honestly, after doing some math and listing out all the good and bad points, on launch, I would have given... On launch, I would have given... Oh, that was a tactical storage pit to block the path. Ah, ah, AIs know what it's doing. Okay. On launch, I would have given it 5 out of 10. Which is not horrible. It's not horrible. There's way worse games. You know, but it's just not... It's not what it needs to be. It's not what it should be. Which is why my last video was titled, Not Good Enough. Not that it's horrible. It's just not good enough. Now with these updates, with the slightly improved pathfinding, slightly improved AI, I would probably give it 6 out of 10. I think it's gone up 1 point at minimum. If we're being generous, maybe 6.5. <laughs> at I would I cannot imagine giving this higher than a 7. Personally, I would give it a 6. The graphics still look good. I mean, this is a preference. I'm okay with these graphics. I, like I'm okay with these graphics being here. It's just there should be classic mode on everything if we want that. Because right now, here's the problem. I want to play the original Age of Empires 1 campaigns. 
how do I do that legitimately? There is no way to do that. I want to play classic mode multiplayer. There's no way to do that. You have to get an old CD or an old ISO or something, an ISO file or something, right? And now let's say I want to play, like even if I want to play custom map classic mode, which I can do here, it's not the original experience because there's now mixed queues and auto reseed farm. So even classic mode in definitive edition for where it is available, it is not truly classic mode. So the only way to play the original Age of Empires 1 is to find an old copy or do what, you know, what most people do. Which, to be clear, I do not recommend you do, unless it's from archive.org, which has a DMCA exception, so it's legal. So yeah, these, these are all issues that we have to think about and take into consideration. And 6 to 7 would be an average rating, yeah. I would say now, well, I gave the original Age of Empires Definitive Edition on launch, uh, eh rating it was very eh. now i give it okay it's okay but you know it could be so so much better so so much better By the way, playing on hardest difficulty AI, they are actually tough, and it looks like they get the farms measured correctly. Uh, in classic mode, which I think the developers are not really focusing on, they build houses too close and they can't fit the farms. The AI is basically the same for definitive edition and classic mode. I don't think there's differentiation. We get the occasional idle farmer, but I think it happens a lot more in classic mode because they can't reach the farms. Looks like we've got red dominating yellow here, by the way. I think red might win, but you never know. Orange seems like they've got some good stuff. Brown is not doing too much at all, really. They also have fewer units just wandering around the base, which is nice. There's the occasional one, but yeah. So build orders and stuff, AI has been improved. But yeah, I would say 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. But, you know, moving forward... If you l want this game, just know that they might stop development at this point. They might continue. Maybe it's back from the dead. Maybe it's back from the dead. But they went silent for quite a few months recently. And, you know, developers were pulled off the project. So I would not be surprised if it happened again. But looking forward, we'll probably see Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition at some point. But how they are going to make that work with Age of Empires 2 on Steam is a mystery. Maybe they'll get it right because I was, I've heard rumors, like of course nothing's confirmed at this point, but I've heard statements and rumors that, you know, they're going to make it cross-platform. So if you buy Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition on the Windows Store, you could play multiplayer with the Steam version. That would be nice. That would be good. I would approve of that message, you know, um, but how, like, what they would add to the Definitive Edition to convince people to switch or to even buy it as their first choice, it would need a lot of work. It would need a lot of work, you know, and again, I don't think it's a Windows Store issue. Lots of games, or at least a few games, have sold really well on the Windows Store, right? The exclusivity there for the store is not my problem. I mean, GOG has exclusives. Epic Store has exclusives. Discord has exclusives. You know? People buy good products wherever it is. So if they either somehow make Age of Empires Definitive Edition a good product or a better product, 
uh, or they make Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition a really good product, then people will buy it. They'll buy it. Right? And I think that pretty much covers all of my points. And I think, to be absolutely clear here, I have nothing against Forgotten Empires or Microsoft. I'm just calling it as I see it. And it is a philosophy in our manifesto here on the channel that we are consumer first, developer second, publisher last, right? Because why, like, I should side with us, regular gamers first. Above all, the experience to us, the market to us is what's most important. Developers, I often give benefit of the doubt because I don't know what goes on behind closed door meetings. I don't know what the investors are saying. I don't know what the publishers are saying. Developers, for the most part, I think 99% of the time, the developers are out to make the best game they can, right? Publishers, again, I don't know what go what's going on behind the closed doors, but it is not my job to sell video games for you. I'm not a marketing arm for you. I'm not here to promote your video games, so I call it as I see it, right? The management comes from the publisher, so if things are mismanaged, it's on the publisher, not the developers. So it's important to differentiate Forgotten Empires and Microsoft here. You know, Forgotten Empires does not decide how much money is going into this project. But yeah, I think that pretty much wraps up all of my thoughts for Age of Empires Definitive Edition with the new update in its current state. You can see that line technology coming in here. <laughs> um, and yeah, besides all that, I think you can take it as you see it. Right? I'm not here to tell you to buy the game or to not buy the game. Just to tell you what I see. Alright, and I think that's pretty good for today. I think I've covered all of my points. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you found it useful and or interesting. And if you'd like to have discussions in the comment section down below, be civil, be pleasant, be understanding, and all of that good stuff. Spread positivity above all else. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next video, which you could check out by clicking the buttons on the screen right now. Bye!